here we go are you are you there are you watching I hope so welcome to English addict so many words so many wonderful phrases so many ways to say so many things hi everybody this is mr duncan in england how are you today are you okay i hope so are you happy i really hope so welcome to what is the first ever english addict if you are into english if you love learning english if you are crazy about the english language then you are in the right place if you are like me you are addicted to the english language you can't get enough of those lovely words welcome to this lesson we are now live across the world on youtube i hope you are feeling good today it's a new look a new sound one or two things are new however it's still me for which i apologize so welcome everyone this is the first one lesson number one you will see in the corner of the screen so that number will tell you which number lesson you are watching so as you can see it is number one and do you like the way that i've put three figures so it looks as if we might make it all the way to a hundred so i'm being very positive at the start of this new series of live streams so we are live now on youtube i hope you are having a good day it is mr duncan at the controls and i hope you are feeling good we have the live chat of course as usual so some things will be the same however some things will be a little different i will always involve you in one or two activities we are we are also going to take a look at some excerpts from one of my english lessons where i talk all about the tests that you have to take be they the ielts or the toefl there are many tests that you can take to prove that your grasp of the english language is 100 percent and that's the reason why i am here now i have a feeling that you are watching me now on youtube and you are thinking mr duncan why are you here live and an even bigger question is when are you here live that is a very good question so i will show you now on the screen when you can catch me live on youtube are you ready here come the live times and days there they are now on the screen you can see them so english addict live every sunday wednesday and friday and there you can see also the time 2 p.m uk time so you can catch me live on sunday wednesday and friday three times a week you can have your fix of the english language so on sunday of course i will be with you at the weekend wednesday midweek in the middle of the week like today and also friday at the end of the week so all of those times are the same 2 p.m uk time so i hope you can catch me then so write those names of the week down <laughs> sunday wednesday friday and also the time that i'm on 2 p.m uk time so there it is on the screen right now shall i say hello to the live chat okay then it wouldn't be a live stream without you and as i always say the only reason why i keep coming back is because of you i suppose i could be in the garden now feeding the birds or maybe going for a nice walk or perhaps i could be on the roof repairing 
some of the tiles maybe instead I'm here with you live on YouTube so I hope you are feeling good today so it's live English and it's Mr Duncan that is me for those who aren't sure Valentin hello Valentin nice to see you here however Blue Thunder congratulations to you Blue Thunder guess what you are first on today's live chat so there so there is no reason to be sad now because you are here and you are first on the live chat so I hope you feel better about that hello also to Belarusia nice to see you here as well I can see that you are using your mobile phone today something a little different Luis Mendez welcome are you an English addict are you addicted to the English language Malitha or Malita is here as well thank you very much for joining me Mohammed Syed is here also Vindra is here watching in Pakistan lots of people are joining me slowly don't worry I will wait for you I won't rush ahead I know that some of you are still connecting and clicking so don't worry I won't rush I won't go too fast today because I know sometimes it takes a while to join the live stream hello also to Sueli also Zeba lots of people already here so what is the reason for this if it is your first time here on the live chat and the live stream you might not be aware what it is I do I teach English and I've been doing it for 13 years on YouTube and that's the reason why I'm here hello Patrick business win is here as well watching in Vietnam nice to see you here again as well Ziba I am very tired because I had to go to college so what are you actually studying which subject are you studying at college Palmyra says yes we are a bit crazy for English well you are in the right place that's all I can say so do you like the new look the new background and of course the new title English addict don't forget to tell your friends if they are crazy about the English language here is the place where they can come and have their fix of all those lovely words hello to sweetness as well also Muna Lena is here hello also to Marina hello Marina nice to see you here today on the live stream I don't know why my hands <laughs> have gone very sweaty I think maybe because I'm a little bit nervous I don't know why why do I feel nervous I've done this loads and loads of times and yet I feel a little nervous my hands are very sweaty and the problem with sweaty hands is when your hands become wet it is very hard to operate your mobile phone I don't know why but it always seems very difficult to to get your mobile phone to work especially if you use a touch screen hello coach coach master hello there I am in France and I've had a lot of fun with you since 2010 Wow so you've been watching me for nine years thank you very much and I suppose I should mention that we are coming towards the end of 2019 a new year is approaching and it's also very busy here in the UK we have a lot of things that have to be sorted out between now and the end of the year Christelle is here I like your new way of presentation thank you very much for that so some of the things will be the same and over the lessons you will see lots of new things appearing as well 
Hello, Akbar. Hello, also Marwa. Also, Helena. Nice to see you here as well. <laughs> Hi, Li Kuang asks, what does addict mean? If you are an addict, if you are addicted to something, it, it means you want it more and more. So maybe you have a little bit of English, but you want to learn more English. You are hungry for more words, more expressions, more ways of expressing yourself in the beautiful language that is English. So that is what addict means. It has various uses, some of them naughty, some of them quite nice. So to be honest with you, you can be addicted to anything. Some people are addicted to, to food. Some people are addicted to alcohol. Some people are addicted to English. And that's what I am. I am quite an English addict, to be honest. Let's have a look outside because it is a very murky, misty day. Oh dear, what's going on out there? It does look rather murky out there today, I must say. It isn't looking great, although you can see many of the leaves are now turning as we are into autumn here in the UK, very much into autumn. So that is what is going on outside right now. Meanwhile, here in the studio, it is myself talking about lots of things. Oh, by the way, <laughs> I had something come through the letterbox this morning. Something came through my door. Can you see it? It is a small box, not a very big box. However, I am very keen to open it. Would you like to see me open this box? And then we can all find out what is inside. I have a feeling that I know what it is. So let's do some English addict unboxing, shall we? Now, is it something to do with English? Is it something to do with my studio? So what do you think is in the box? Do you think it is something for me? Or maybe something for Mr. Steve? Who knows? So let's have a look, shall we? Let's have a look right now in the box. What do you think is in there? <laughs> wow, the view is amazing. Thank you very much, Marwa. So can you see what's in the box? Can you guess what is inside the box? And yes, I have covered up the address because I don't want people coming around to my house for a cup of tea in the afternoon. So what do you think is in the box? Something caught, something came through my door this morning and I'm not sure what it is. I have a feeling that I know. Patrick says, is it a book? Hmm, I like it. Is it a book? Is it something for the spiders? Asks Safak. Can I just tell you that the spiders have gone? So they've actually gone back to their owner. In fact, they went back about three months ago. So the spiders have now gone. We were looking after someone's spiders. We were taking care of three large tarantula spiders. <clears throat> but they've gone now. <laughs> they have gone. Is it Christmas lights? No, no, it's not Christmas lights. I have plenty of those already, although I will be getting my Christmas lights down in a few days time because Christmas is on the way. But no, it is not. It is definitely not Christmas lights. I like a T-shirt. Is it a T-shirt? Is it some new clothing? No, it isn't. It isn't a new item of clothing. Nothing like that. Is it a new cap? <laughs> no, it isn't a new hat, 
but it is something that is quite useful <clears throat> and it is also something that is replacing a thing that is quite old and has broken so this is actually replacing something that has broken it has stopped working it has gone kaput <laughs> I love that word when something goes kaput it means it stops working so when something goes kaput it means it goes wrong it has broken no it is not clothing it is not a book it is not for my studio either let's just say it is for one of my favorite things so think about my favorite things and you might know what it is the box looks like it is a book maybe a dictionary well I already have a dictionary to be honest so here is my dictionary it's a big one it's a big thick dictionary so there is my dictionary I already have one so it's not a dictionary it's not a book is it food see you harder asks is it food mm. you are near you are very close however it isn't food however it might be connected to some sort of food Ooh. <laughs> Louis Louis says the word kaput is German I think it does sound German I always remember when I was in Turkey and I was staying in a lovely hotel in Turkey and someone came in to clean the room one of the maids and one of the lights in the room wasn't working so I just asked her I said the light has stopped working it has gone kaput and she laughed she thought it was hilarious that I used the word kaput because apparently in Turkey people will often use the word kaput when something has broken is it cups of tea or coffee oh you are very close so it isn't tea and it isn't coffee however this thing might be connected might be connected to those things Eric says is it an item that is used in the kitchen you might be right you might be very close there shall we have a look then is it something for the birds can I just tell you the birds have plenty of food they have become very greedy recently because all of the insects have now disappeared now that winter is approaching so the birds have become very desperate in the garden in fact let's have a look outside at the back we haven't had a look outside have we so there is the view outside at the back of the house the sheep are not there at the moment they've wandered off into the next field so sadly the sheep aren't aren't nearby at the moment that's a shame however here in the studio we have a box to open so let's do it now shall we it is time to do some unboxing what is in the box have you noticed whenever you open one of these boxes you never get it right first time you always open it from the wrong end and that's what I've just done I've opened it from the wrong end I'm supposed to open it from there but instead I opened it from there so unfortunately I wasn't very successful in opening this box so let's try again <laughs> this is not easy by the way oh for goodness sake who would have thought getting into a box would be so hard <laughs> finally we have got into the box 
Ooh. I know what it is. Ooh, yes. <laughs> it isn't a gift for Mr. Steve. However, this will help Mr. Steve. And it will it will also help me as well. I wonder what it is. Ooh, there it is. Very nice. So it comes in another box, but I won't show you the box because it will give it away. So this is something that is going to be very useful in the kitchen. Something that will come in very useful when I need some refreshment. Ooh, what could it be <gasps> so this is an object that I will be using in the kitchen whenever I feel thirsty oh and maybe mr. Steve needs a little bit of energy to help him work because sometimes Steve gets very tired when he's in his office or if he's been out in the car and he's very tired it is something for making your coffee it is something that you use for making your coffee foamy so you can make your coffee look just like a cappuccino so this is something that we use for making coffee frothy if something is frothy it means it has lots of bubbles lots of bubbles rising to the top or quite often on the surface so this will make my coffee nice and frothy so that is what came through the post this morning because unfortunately during the week my my other coffee frother decided to die so it doesn't work anymore however can I just tell you something between you and me I think Mr. Steve broke it I do I really think so so I actually think that Mr. Steve broke the other one so this is a replacement this is something that will replace the old coffee frothy <laughs> and if, as you can see it needs some batteries so I, I will put some batteries in later and the other thing it comes with a very handy stand so there is a little stand so you can actually put it on the stand when you are not using it so this is something that will be very useful for when Mr. Steve is feeling thirsty and he's shouting down the stairs he's saying Duncan make me a cup of coffee now I want a cup of coffee give me coffee so this will come in very useful for when I'm making mr. Steve's coffee it will make the coffee go frothy very nice so that is it that is the unboxing so when we say unboxing we mean we are taking something out of a box or maybe we are opening a package so here on YouTube you will often see people with unboxing videos they will be taking something out of a box so there it is my little coffee frothy machine for helping me make my coffee look like a cappuccino the only difference is it won't cost lots and lots of money and the the other good thing this was very cheap as well so it wasn't very expensive so that's nice so there it is that is the thing that came through the door this morning <laughs> what was that so I hope you enjoyed that we are now going to take a look at an excerpt from one of my lessons now this is something that I made around three years ago and we're going to look at two parts of this lesson so part one is coming up now and this is all about the IELTS 
and TOEFL test and of course there are many other types of English test as well that you can take so take a look at this video and if you are about to take an exam or maybe you are thinking about taking an English test maybe this will be useful to you hi everybody this is Mr Duncan in England how are you today are you okay I hope so are you happy I hope so in today's special lesson we will take a look at the exams and tests that are taken by those hoping to use their second language of English in their lifestyle and career choices of course we are talking about using English as a way of changing your life so after many requests and suggestions I am finally going to guide you through the process of taking your acquired English skills and turning them into a tool to shape your future but before we begin let's take a look at two commonly asked questions posed by those who are studying English as a second language what exactly are these exams and why do we have to take them when we talk about ESL we are naming the action of learning English as a second language that is to say what is being learned is other than the person's native language there is a need to show that a person who has studied English is able to use it in their day-to-day -day life this requires a test to be taken the most common ones are IELTS TOEFL and TOEIC IELTS stands for International English Language Testing System and is a test that is normally taken by those who wish to live or study abroad in an English speaking country there are two types of IELTS test general and academic the general IELTS test is taken by those who wish to move abroad they wish to migrate to an English speaking country then there is the academic version which is for those who wish to enroll for higher education in an English speaking country the general test focuses on the day-to-day -day use of English English for survival and integration is the rather unpleasant way of describing what this test is analyzing the IELTS test decides whether a person will be able to live and interact with others on a day-to-day -day basis it is a test given to show what your grasp of English actually is IELTS tends to concentrate on the following areas speaking listening reading and writing the abbreviation TOEFL stands for test of English as a foreign language the TOEFL English exam has pretty much the same structure as the IELTS one the real main difference being that TOEFL was created by the American Evaluation Testing Service whereas the IELTS test was created with the cooperation of the University of Cambridge and the British Council put simply one is British and the other is American it is important to note that they are both internationally recognized exams of English proficiency however IELTS is more often taken by those wishing to move to or study in Great Britain while the TOEFL exam is mainly taken by those wishing to stay or study in North American countries both of these tests take around three to four hours to complete those wishing to migrate to the UK Australia or Canada must pass the IELTS test in order to have their application accepted it's worth noting that over the past few years these rules have been tightened with Australia now being one of the hardest countries in the world to gain citizenship in
finally there is another english language test that is considered to be one of the world's leading evaluation exams it is the test of english for international communication or toec for short which is commonly used by companies and organizations to promote place and hire employees once again this test has been created to evaluate the ability and level of someone's day-to-day -day english it is worth noting that for work in a specific industry a person might have to explain and know the definitions of specialist words business english skills might be tested for those wishing to work abroad for a company based in an english-speaking country or one with headquarters there the origins of the toec exam are interesting in that it was created for business purposes in japan in the 1970s these days the toec test is recognized all around the world the toec test is carried out in two parts the first part is a listening and reading test which consists of 200 multiple choice questions each multiple choice question gives you the correct answer along with incorrect ones you have to choose the correct answer for example paul lost his phone on the to school is it a pass b way or c path if you chose b then that would be the correct answer the listening and reading section is designed to put your understanding and knowledge of english to the test it is not just a matter of remembering words and sentences your cognitive abilities are being put to the test as well this part of the test checks your comprehension and listening skills this is one of the hardest parts of the toec exam as each audio test is only played once so beware the second part of the toec test consists of a speaking and writing exam needless to say the first part is the one most students dread the thought of having to speak out loud to a stranger in a stressful situation is not one that many feel comfortable with you will need to make sure that you are ready for this part of the test normally this section is done in the form of questions and answers the speaking section consists of visual questions you will be asked to make comments and verbally describe things shown to you the writing section is similar to the spoken part but instead of speaking you will be writing this will also be in the form of questions and answers and observations overall the standardized english tests mentioned today take on the same form they are all designed to test the key abilities required by most english-speaking countries from those wishing to work or study there all that is except the united kingdom changes made in 2014 mean that the toec exam is not recognized as a formal test anymore in britain for those wishing to work live or study in the uk an ielts test must be taken instead you are watching live english yes it's english addict this is the first ever live stream under that name i hope you enjoyed that we have part two coming a little bit later on before the end of today's live stream can i say congratulations to julie and also belarusia both of you guessed the mystery object correctly so both of you were right about that thank you very much for for putting forward your guesses so thank you very much i do appreciate you getting involved hello also to mika hello mika welcome it's english addict there is nothing wrong with your computer it's a new name a slightly different look but it's still me i'm afraid very sorry about that 
Palmyra is here I would not like to take any exams some people are not very good at taking tests I must be honest with you I am one of those people for some reason and this is something that I've always suffered from I don't know why but I know things I have knowledge however whenever I go into a test situation my mind goes completely blank I can't think of anything I can't remember anything something very strange happens to my brain it completely switches off it completely closes down I can't think of anything so I hate any situation where I have to take an exam or some sort of test I really I must be honest with you I don't like taking tests at all even simple tests I always feel as if I'm under some sort of pressure some sort of stressful situation so actually Palmyra I agree with you completely tests are stressful but I really don't like taking them I don't I really don't I don't know why something it's almost it's almost like a reaction it's almost like something that I can't control a little bit like breathing you can't really control your breathing you are doing it all the time so when I go into a situation where I take a test or an exam for some reason I don't know why I go completely blank the last time that happened was when I was applying to have some office space in Wolverhampton and I had to prepare lots of things because they wanted to see a business plan and lots of other things and all sorts of information but when I went in for the interview my my brain went completely blank and I don't know why it's a sort of reaction it's something I can't stop it's very strange all I can say is that has got me into a lot of difficult situations in the past Ali Raze I have studied a lot of material for IELTS but I did not take part in it I did not like to be tested as well so some people don't perform very well in test situations and of course when you are tested there are many things that you are tested on so you will be tested on for example your grammar so the way you construct words a lot of people complain about this they say Mr Duncan can I just tell you that my most unfavorite part of learning English is grammar so for some people they really don't like grammar however it is something that is necessary it gives the English language its formation so it is a standardized way of using English so there are lots of words in English and they have to come in certain orders just like any other language so grammar is a part of learning English that most people hate my advice is don't try to push yourself too hard so grammar is something you will learn over time as you learn new words you will recognize where they belong in a sentence so grammar is something that you learn over time so you can't rush learning grammar a lot of people do not like grammar also another part of learning English and I suppose any other language is spelling the way you spell words now I'm going to be honest with you this might not be the most important part of taking an English test however you will still be judged on how well you spell so you might find that you you could lose points if you are writing an answer and you make spelling mistakes you might lose points so spelling is something that might not seem very important 
if you want to use English as a spoken language however you will need to make sure that you have good spelling as well you need to make sure that your spelling is good because you can lose some valuable points if your spelling is incorrect however having said that I make spelling mistakes a few days ago I actually made a spelling mistake on one of my live streams I was showing a piece of paper and on the paper the word was spelt incorrectly so even I make mistakes with spelling sometimes so as I said if you are writing well writing will cover many things including grammar and spelling so if you are being tested on your ability on your writing ability you will be tested on both grammar and spelling and also you will be asked to to read something so it isn't just about grammar and spelling also you will need to be able to read some writing so something that is written down or typed here's an interesting word your cognitive skills so when we say cognitive what we are actually saying is your ability to understand your understanding of something so for example if you are learning English then you have to be able to use it in everyday situations so a situation where you might be going into a shop to buy something so cognitive means understanding and when we are talking about English it means your way of understanding English and the way you process the English in your brain so it is your understanding and also the process of understanding as well so the words are in your head but you also have to know how to use them in a situation and one of the hardest parts about speaking English is of course quite often you don't know what you are going to say next if you are in a situation where anything could happen then you have to make sure that you have good cognitive skills the ability to understand what is being said but also how to process what you are listening to and how to respond as well so your understanding when we talk about your understanding we are talking about your perception the way you see something the way you understand something and of course your awareness so these might sound like very strange things to be tested with or on however the way you process English in your mind is an important part of learning English but this is something that you will do over time this is something that you will do as you learn the language again just like grammar it is something that you learn slowly steadily you can't rush learning you can't rush it hello Louis Louis grammar is hard but it is something also important as the casual words yes this is something that I'm asked quite often about learning grammar how do I learn grammar what do I need to learn grammar there are many books available many exercise books and also maybe YouTube videos that can help you however if you want my advice I would always go with a good recognized book maybe something from Oxford University or Cambridge University there are, there are many others as well I think Collins also does some very good English tutorial exercise books as well so there are many in fact I did review a very interesting book uh, published by I think it was DK DK publishing and that was all about learning English from the basics right up 
to the advanced so there are many books on the market you can always google never be afraid to google so you can always search for grammar exercise books or maybe grammar teaching but my advice is always buy a book get the book in front of you there is no better way of studying grammar or spelling than having a book in front of you a dictionary and also a very good exercise book as well and there are many available all over the internet and that's the great thing about studying nowadays because you can find information from everywhere and I love it so much I really do hello to a L F I want to become a fluent speaker not like my own language of course how long can it take please thank you for your advice well again this is a question that's asked many times in fact last week I was asked the week before someone asked how long does it take to improve your spoken English how long does it take depends on how much you do it and what you want to change so some people might only want to change a little part of their speech however some people want to learn how to use English in a completely different way so perhaps there is a little bit of their own accent in the way they speak English but it really does depend on you as I always say the most important thing about learning English and using English is being understood as long as the other person can understand what you are saying that is the most important thing of all hello Tadas that's very nice to see you here Mr Duncan what does the number in the corner of the screen mean there it is you can see there that tells you that this is number one of my English addict live streams so you will see there in the corner you will know straight away which number you are watching so this is number one the first one of my English addict live for anyone who is interested in learning English and if you are crazy about English like me then this is definitely the, the best place for you to be if I was honest hello Mr Duncan time is running and it's going to be over and you didn't glance a question that I asked would you kindly share with me what days will you be live I did actually type it I've actually put it on the live chat for you however I will also put it on the screen right now so there they are English addict live Sunday Wednesday and Friday so I will be with you on Sunday Wednesday and Friday three times a week I will be with you from 2 p.m. UK time so those are the times for my lessons so I hope now you have written them down I will be with you on Sunday Wednesday and Friday so my next lesson will be on Friday thank you for your advice I appreciate it that's okay that's why I'm here I hope it has been useful to you we are now going to take a look at the second part of my lesson all about taking the English test so here is the rest of the lesson and I hope it is helpful to you the way in which each test is scored and how long they last vary slightly in the IELTS test the exam lasts around three hours there is no actual pass or fail at the end each test is graded overall a final grade band is tallied and this banding decides what your English proficiency level is the highest band is nine which indicates that you are very fluent in English this band is classed as expert level needless to say the lowest level is zero 
which means you have no fluency in English whatsoever. This score indicates that the person who took the test did not even try. In all fairness, the average band level is between 6 and 8. You will of course be aiming for a 7 to 8 band. Anything over 6 is considered as being competent. The TOEFL test takes around 4 hours to complete, with a break in the middle. Unlike the IELTS exam, the TOEFL test has a final score marked in points. The maximum points possible is 120, with the lowest being 0. The least acceptable score is around 60. To assure yourself of a good academic placement, a score of over 110 will be required. Just like the IELTS test, you will be examined on your ability to listen, express, read and write. Once again, it is worth mentioning that the TOEFL test is taken by those wishing to apply for a visa in North American countries, such as the USA, while the IELTS is for those wishing to apply for a visa in English-speaking countries, such as Canada, Australia or the United Kingdom. The types of questions asked in an English test have a similar theme and goal. Many of them are designed to gauge your ability to communicate on a daily basis in society. Some questions are designed to trick or catch you out. Listening and multi-choice questions can be the trickiest ones to get right because of the added pressure and the obvious time limit. But this is the whole point of the test to see how well you handle yourself in certain everyday social situations. This can involve doing something simple like asking for a loaf of bread in a supermarket to explaining why you want to study in a particular country. My three key sentences for showing what is required by these tests are think in English, express in English, speak in English. One of the other big questions asked by those learning English is what must I do to prepare for the English test? First of all, let me say that there are no quick routes or fast tracks to mastering English. Anyone who tells you this is lying. As cliched as this might sound, the only way of getting something out of the test is to put some effort in first. This applies to everyone learning English whether they are attending full or part-time classes or if they are studying alone, you only get out what you put in. As you move forward with your studies, you must keep evaluating your progress. Pinpoint your weak points. Find out what your weaknesses are in English. For some, this might be reading, while for others, this might be listening or comprehension. If you are serious about taking an English test, then you must practice English every day. The key to success in these tests requires that you do the following. To master English, you need to create an environment in which it can grow and flourish. You should view English as a part of your body, just as you would an arm or leg. Make it a part of your everyday life. Large strides begin with small steps. Do not rush your studies. Focus on one part at a time. Don't overdo it and remember to take a rest. Know your weaknesses. 
find out what your weak points of using English are if it's reading read more if it's listening then why not put on a few English DVDs or better still listen and watch some of Mr Duncan's English lessons focus on your strengths as a way of combating your weaknesses never be afraid to ask for help and never give up record yourself and listen to your voice and get used to the way it sounds don't be afraid to speak out loud repeating things again and again is not a waste of time as practice makes perfect a test that doesn't test is not a test at all remember you can never know too much but you can always know too little understand what each part of the English test will expect from you all of the approved tests concentrate on your ability to read write listen comprehend and speak I hope this lesson has been useful to you and I would like to wish you all the best with your English tests and I hope that you get to enjoy the success that comes with all of the hard work you've put into your English studies. Don't forget, you never really stop learning English as there is always something new to discover. So, I hope you will join me very soon for another lesson. This is Mr Duncan in the birthplace of the English language. That is, of course, England, saying thank you for watching me, teaching you. And if you are about to take your test, whichever it happens to be, can I wish you all the best of luck. We, we are coming towards the end of today's first English Addict Live. I hope you've enjoyed it. It is a little different. There will be new and hopefully exciting things that I will be adding as the lessons go by. So I hope that has been useful to you. I am about to go. It is just after three o'clock here and wherever you are i hope you have a good day it's been a super time and if you want to watch this again of course you can watch it later on for those who want to know when i'm on sunday wednesday and friday 2 p.m uk time you can enjoy learning english and hopefully there will be something useful for you as well so when we talk about learning English we have your understanding your perception your awareness also we have your word power your vocabulary so the words that you know the words that you know the definition of so often we will say word power your word power is the words that you know the words that you have remembered and stored up here so we talk all about our vocabulary so the way we speak the words we use and quite often you will find that you will need to learn lots of words to have a good grasp of english and as i always say the more you learn the more you enjoy learning the more you do it the more you enjoy doing it i think maybe one day you will also be an english addict if you aren't already so your vocabulary is often described as your word power learn as many words as you can try to learn some new words every day finally also if you are being tested on your english especially when it comes to spoken English which a lot of people say is the hardest part of learning English your pronunciation your intonation the way you stress the words as you speak so there are many things that you are tested on when you take the English exam 
please don't rush please don't push too hard give yourself plenty of time relax when you are learning and then you will avoid all of that horrible stress i'm going now see you on friday 2 p.m uk time thank you very much for your lovely company on the live chat thanks a lot it's been great being here i must be honest it's been good fun this is mr duncan in the birthplace of english saying thanks for watching see you on friday 2 p.m uk time and of course you know what's coming next yes you do enjoy english and ta-ta for now